Hi, Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. A demonstration by Soren Berger on his scoops prompted quite a series of scoops for me. He had two styles. First, a round bold scoop that uh, was very interesting. Then, an oval bold scoop. Now, these prompted me to develop a set of jaws for my scroll chuck, which I call a scoop chuck, to make hollowing the bowls much, much easier for these two styles of scoops. Then I remembered that I'd seen yet another style made, and that is a scoop where you bore the end before you form the rest of it and you, as a spindle. Now, to this, I decided to add a multi-axis dimension of cocking the handle a little bit more from the angle of the scoop. So this is a multi-axis board bowl scoop. Have I got it all? Now, these are the three styles that I know of. Uh, if there's another style, let me know. We'll see what we can do about it. But for now, let's make this third style of scoop the board end multi-axis board bowl scoop. This Titan Cedar is a wonderful wood to work with. Roughing goes quickly with a spindle gouge. There's a defect on the right end that should tool out in forming the handle. Seeing that defect, I'll cut my tenon on the left end to use to mount the wood into a scroll chuck. Then dismount the spindle and remount it into my scroll chuck. Ordinarily now, I'd start boring out the end of the spindle. But on this scoop, I'm interjecting one additional step. I want a small disc with a mounting tenon on one side and a small tenon on the other that will fit into the hole that I will bore a bit later. For now, I'll cut the tenon and part it off from the end of the spindle. Next, I'll bore out the end to a depth of about 2 inches, much deeper than that, and it becomes very tough to bore and smooth. Then I'll swap bits for one about one half inch smaller and bore another quarter inch or so. This is so I can round out the bottom much more easily. Time to clean up the bore with a round carbide cutter. Then sand the interior. Next I'll cut a matching tenon on the small disc to match the interior bore. I waited until now to fit it so that it can be snug. With the spindle remounted, I'll make some critical marks, most especially for the depth of the board interior. Next, insert the small disc as a plug into the board end and bring up the tailstock. Then smooth the exterior of the scoop portion. I'm using a skew for a very smooth surface. I'll also take the opportunity now to sand the scoop exterior. Now I'll scratch my head to figure out which way to offset the turning axis. I could have offset the axis parallel to the old, but then the handle would come out straight from the scoop. Instead, I'm offsetting both ends because I want the handle angled down to the scoop. This is the second turning axis. and remount the wood between centers, but angled a bit cockeyed. This is why I wanted that small disc fitted snugly in the scoop. Now it's time to start the handle. The wood is turning a bit wildly. I'm starting carefully and needing to cinch up the tailstock many times to keep tension. I'll start with a spindle gouge, then finish with a skew for a smoother finish. Before I change anything, I'll sand and finish the handle. Next, I'll return the axis to the original axis to turn off the top of the bead on the end of the handle. 
This feature gives a bit of a hook on the bottom side of the handle. Then the remaining wood gave up under the stress of the shifted axis. But it was nearly finished anyway, so let's move on. Next, before sawing the scoop portion, I've hot melt glued the scoop to a piece of scrap wood for safety. I don't want the scoop to spin or shift while I'm sawing it. Then for sanding, I did just a little bit on the disc sander before moving to a sanding pad mounted on the drill press. My engraver is ready for signing when nearly finished. Then finish with my utility mix of beeswax and mineral oil. Finally a short session with the buffing system for a great shine. The one thing I'd change is to round over the scoop transition to the handle a little more before shifting the axis. I'd also try to reduce the amount of wood I leave in the transition. But if I go too far, I'd make the outside smaller than the inside and have to start over. So maybe I'll leave a bit more wood than the minimum after all. These axis shifts make estimating the amount of wood to leave very confusing. I like this scoop, and best of all, my wife likes it. Which of the three scoops is best? How about a set of all three? For different purposes. That's all for this week's video. Please like this video. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe to both my website and YouTube channel. Always wear your full face shield. Goggles are not enough. Until next time, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns.